started as a simple exercise to stimulate um, a new consciousness in the Commonwealth. And Nehru himself, in fact, suggested this idea. And I was very impressed by the general and genuine interest in the Commonwealth throughout India. And I, in fact, asked him what we could do to preserve the idea, to project it a little bit, keep those feelings alive, and to give practical expression to them. And I suggest I might bring a few hundred people from this country to India to meet at all levels to discuss the possibilities of um, developing this potential. Uh, this led to the, the first expedition in 1965. And the idea was that an expedition between West and East would lay the foundations for a whole series of expeditions uh, between all countries of the Commonwealth. The first expedition led to the second one, which is much bigger and, of course, more difficult because it's a long journey, it's a long distance, and every mile is a hazard. And then we found ourselves planning this, the third combat expedition. And here we have 500 or more than 500 men and women. They're drawn mainly from the universities because we feel that the universities for administrative reasons are the right centers to organize this. And also the universities must in fact project leadership throughout the country. But we have also industry, the coal board, uh, technical colleges, schools, hospitals, local government, and so on. Lots of people involved. This broadens the involvement and makes it much better, in, in effect. All the functions of the expedition are carried out by the people who form part of it. Each coach, each contingent, is a self-contained unit. And in it, there are drivers, navigators, radio operators, cooks, hostesses, bankers, and the rest of them. And the decisions for the whole expedition are made collectively by the leaders. Each coach appoints its own leader. And of course, in the contingents themselves, they discuss the importance and the outcome and the way of carrying out each decision. And my role is simply that of coordinating this in terms of the whole expedition. And in fact, I believe the strength of the expedition is that every person is contributing to it. Uh, major items like oats, we've got enough. Uh, we required 400 pounds. So, I mean, it seems to me we, we ought to, if, if we're going to make sort of half the class rules about groups of five, it's obviously breaks down as far as India's concerned. Yeah. 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 Because we're all going to different places. One doesn't have to do This involves setting the engine to, top, uh, to the pump timing mark, number one compression. On the flywheel, there are two marks. One of the marks is marked UC, which is upper centre, the top dead centre position. The other mark is a line and a letter D. Um, there's another thing, uh, being a mechanic, most of your maintenance is done underneath there. Got it. We'll have to break the seal on this, of course, to get these off. And and it should be resealed afterwards. And with sufficient supply, the first medical requirement lasts for 14 weeks and then it's the same time. Uh, sunglasses. I don't, don't need to say anything about sunglasses, everybody knows this. We should take uh, some fairly dark sunglasses because the... Sun right, this is um, the Pi Radio. The normal range is roughly between 7 and 8 miles, though they can carry as much as up to 25 to 30 miles away. Because the main switches are the power switches, which are the off position, the receive position, and the standby position. The start of comics was based um, on this conception that at the end of the last war, one saw the, the Commonwealth and the Empire, if you like, uh, in the most incredible situation. 
here were men of all races, of all colors and creeds, uh, joined together in a terrifying war against the, the, the kind of tyranny that swept through Europe. And these men were men of the Commonwealth of the Empire. And one's got to say that before you come near a thing like comics, how marvelous it would be if you could preserve something of that comradeship. Not the guns, not the war, but that comradeship that this situation threw up. And what we're saying now is, can we not find another incentive for the same quality, take men from the university and commit them to the same kind of challenges without guns, without war, and say, can't you make this kind of comradeship come alive? Let's die with sitting with me jug and spoon One fine morning in the month of June A birdie sang on an ivy bunch And the song he sang was a jug of punch What more diversion can a man desire than to court a girl by an alehouse fire, a curly pip and to crack and crunch, iron on the table, a jug of punch, to When I first uh, put in for it, the general idea was to get 12 weeks off work. <laughs> there are too many people, I feel, who seem to have come on the expedition just as a cheap ride to India. Almost, perhaps 75% of comics are passengers and don't believe in Greg's ideals. I mean, initially, I think it was probably a cheap way to see a lot of the world. And then as time went on, I found that I was getting more and more involved with the comics ideals. I didn't see it doing a tremendous amount politically. I see it much more as a, a goodwill uh, mission. I see it more as a, as a personal thing. The uh, tremendous opportunity this presents for just making ordinary friendships with people you wouldn't otherwise meet. And it's a home experience just living together for 12 weeks with these people from various walks of life and with people you've never met before and you don't know. You just have to learn to get along with each other and give and take all the time, otherwise it's hopeless. Sometimes I feel I'm perfectly happy travelling with the same 25 people and other times I could bloody kill the lot of them. If we can go 15,000 miles without a murder on the coach, I think we'll be doing pretty well. Oh, joy unbounded, with wealth surrounded, the knell is sounded, oh, green if and woe, it seems to me, oh, such as she, a judge is he, and a good judge too, oh, joy unbounded, with wealth I met Greg in Edinburgh, he talked about this idea, 500 people, the 20 coaches, you know, the sort of largest expedition, overland expedition ever to be undertaken, sort of, you know, it just captured my imagination. I thought, what a great thing this is. If you can get a group of young people working together, not to just go to India, but to go anywhere, to meet other young people of other countries, and just, just talk about anything, this is very important. So it didn't matter that we were going to India. It could have been any continent before I was interested in. Greg's concentrating too much on, on the Commonwealth. You know, fair enough, we're going to India, and it was because of Mr. Nehru that the whole thing got started. But I think that each country is tremendously important in its own right.
Greg's got his head in the clouds. He's slightly too idealistic about it. The idea is right, but um, I don't think he's facing reality in trying to put it across. I think Greg is basically a very genuine person. Greg's ideas about the family of man are tremendously idealistic. There's no reason why, just because they're idealistic, they can't work. I think it would take um, a miracle to get them put into practice, but I feel that if we can do something to try and get these things put into practice. to some extent. But beyond Istanbul, things become exciting. It's this exhilarating feeling that you're now in another continent. to operate a convoy system unless it becomes very regimented and we're not really very regimented on Comex. Each coach decides when to stop and where to stop and, and we stop. When you're out on the open road it is up to the, own, the one coach operating as an individual unit to look after itself. When you're sitting in the coach a lot of the time you, you're hardly aware of what's going past the window because uh, it's so difficult to absorb the, the things you see. They, they flash past so quickly. You don't remember the details very much until you actually stop, and then the real impressions come home to you. aspects of comics. You've got the high and mighty aspect. You've got this ideal of going out to all these places and promoting goodwill. And you've got the other angle where you're banging along in a bus 50 miles an hour and you're looking at the same faces over and over again. And you're wondering what you're going to have for tea. Is it going to be beans and toast again? And you think, my goodness me, I wonder when the next loose stop's going to be. For its ways, for where the dark star never glows, I wear away my days. It gets pretty cramped on the coach, uh, particularly when you're travelling on, on long days. You draw the curtains on the, on the windows to keep the sun out because it's so hot, and then you get stifled because there isn't enough air movement. Deep down in the coal mine underneath the ground. It becomes very dusty. This is perhaps the worst thing, worse than the heat. 
because everything becomes dirty, whatever you touch is dirty. Whenever you have a drink, it tastes of chlorine. You start the journey before the sun rises and you finish the journey after the sun sets. And you become very tired. Yeah, getting up at four o'clock in the morning. I didn't know what the word looked like at four o'clock in the morning before, a couple of days ago. Last night I dreamed a dream of steak and chips and beer. I was wearing silk pajamas, sweet music in my ears. The room was air conditioned and the walls were hung with eyes. When this voice says we're moving on and you missed your morning rise, I shook myself awake. I was feeling real bad. How did them good on bugs get into my sleeping bag? Last night I put on fly fell like every camper should. But I still got bitten every place. I guess I taste real good. Oh, come well for nations are a mighty fine thing. But I'm tired of chlorine water and powdered drink. You've got this very basic and fundamental aspect of everyday life. People walking around in bare feet, you've got people cooking over a hot stove. Obviously the main problems are, are judging amounts and what to buy. I find that people are more involved in living day to day. What's for lunch? What's for tea? You're steering a course, if you like, between the, the banker's wrath and the the wrath of the hungry people on the coach. You go up to the, the loo and you, you go for a shave and you find you've left your soap. And you know, the people are only too willing, you know. What's yours is mine, what's mine's yours. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I'm aware that I, as a leader, I have a certain responsibility. I find it ex extremely difficult when, you know, I'm, I want to buzz off for a drink and I find that I've got to sort of restrain myself and restrain other people. I think it's a matter of asserting oneself. It gives you an insight into the other person's way of life, their little idiosyncrasies. I think when I look back upon it, I'll remember the strops we had about tidiness and packing and rather petty practical things. But above all, I'll remember the people. Well, I went to see the dark, cause I was feeling kind of ill. It's my business, they won't find, do you have some sort of pill? Don't worry, son, take ten of these, you'll soon feel mighty fine. So I went to find that coach again, but it's gonna let me behind. Greg's either 200 miles in front or 200 miles behind normally, depending on where he's needed. And the fact that he's not actually with the expedition at any one moment doesn't matter. For we're fairly capable sort of people, we can look after our own day-to-day -day affairs. But if we're not going to be an army, then we, we can't expect to run as an army. We have to be free to make our own decisions. When you meet up with Greg and everyone's tired and hungry, he just gives us a little chat. The balance sheet of food. It's been something that everybody has made a contribution. Therefore, the beauty of it is no one person carries some peculiar kind of halo about comics. It literally belongs totally to everybody who's ever participated in it, weak or strong, you know, good or indifferent, it doesn't matter. And that's what gives it its strength, I think. <laughs> 
I've had in the back of my mind a um, key to success being the taking out of 20 vehicles and 500 people and bringing them home safely. This destroys the cynicism that might still lurk in the minds of people against comics too because it was an accident. This destroys forever the, the, the unkind attitude towards the student body as being irresponsible and so on, and therefore incapable of taking on a thing of this sort, driving vehicles, driving buses and all the rest of it. Well, it was two inches for the back, and oh, it was oh, the Not really, I mean, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's just about now. Now, this year's quicker than the Roman banks. What is this water buffalo doing then? Dancing in there. I just wandered east. I didn't come with a plan for comics. I didn't even think in terms of comics. I just came to see, you know, are we in fact disliked, hated in this country? And I, I, I discovered there that people wanted to belong to a great association that had the same spirit without the, 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 the connotations that we associate with the empire, one country dominating. But a relationship without the framework, a new relationship. Color, class, creed, and race. The essence of these simple factors constitutes today the most dangerous single thing that exists. And if that is true, the whole of this complex is present inside the Commonwealth. And if the Commonwealth group nations, 28 of them, 800 million people, can to some extent find the healing touch throughout this very difficult sphere of human relationships, I think the rest of the world will benefit. And perhaps the role of the Commonwealth will pass into the rest of the world and pass into history. succeeded inside itself because somehow for all our failings and there were many basically there was a kind of comradeship which was equal to it and we overcame the problems time and time and time again if one could say about comic street the greatest achievement in my view was that people all over the capital all sorts of people were talking commonwealth with a new kind of pride and confidence can you remember a day in the whole 14 days that we were in Delhi that we weren't in the newspapers? It was talked about in exactly the terms we saw, with thousands of people all gathered together with song and music and drama being the essence of a great moment. It was talked about in those terms. It happened in those terms. 
we got a maximum audience of 10,000 every night for five nights and probably about another two or three thousand outside. How do you account for 10,000 people turning out night after night after night after night? It, it merely means there's an urgency on the side. The whole community to do something to a reawakening is required somewhere. It's taking the lid off the kettle, so to speak. Water come to me. 